Hi, my name is Nick, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a first look at this Cat-Eye Volt 400 duplex front and rear helmet mounted head and tail light for the bicycle. We'll go ahead and briefly look at the outside of the box. It does say the front lights 400 lumens with 150 hours max. The rear is 10 lumens max with a 300 hour maximum battery life. And it does mention here that it is a helmet light. It was shipped like this, I guess to protect the light. Let me see if I can pull this out. Oh, you can just pull it right out and take a look at this right here. That states a long press for on and off and press for mode changes. The side of the packaging indicates a few more things. That's a helmet light, cartridge, daytime, all weather, optic cube, side visibility, low battery indicator, and a two year warranty. There's also some important information on the back of this box, such as the battery run times. The front light on its high setting has 3 hours at 400 lumens, 10 hours at 100 lumens, low is 18 hours at 50 lumens, and then there's a daytime hyper constant for 9 hours, and also a flashing mode for 50 lumens for 150 hours. When the front light's turned off, the rear constant has up to 300 hours at 10 lumens, but at a constant, it's 35 hours of battery life. There's also some battery information for front and rear when both lights are turned on. And it does indicate that you could charge the light in four to five hours with a fast charge. I'm not in the United Kingdom, but there's some information for UK customers. On the bottom, there's a symbol not to throw it in the garbage. It probably is e-waste after it can no longer be used. There's a Proposition 65 warning for California customers in the United States. And there is a little sign that indicates safety light. And this should be 180 degrees around if it's facing back that you can see from a lot of different angles. So let's go ahead and see what's inside the package here. It looks like the light, some instruction manuals, the helmet mount, and that's about it, along with the box. Under the helmet mount was an attachment, and it looks like a micro USB connection to a USB type A for charging your light. This will be good if you want to keep just a small little cable, and it's currently the same cable or power that I use for my Garmin Edge Cyclo computer. There's quite a few instructions, so if you want to see a certain section, feel free to pause it. This top part talks about how to charge it and how to mount it to a helmet. Hopefully you can read this section. If it's hard to read, try a higher resolution up to 1080p. Section 2 continues on with how to mount it. This section states that charging time is approximately 6 hours and that you could recharge and charge it about 300 times until the capacity drops to 70%. It also has a stated weight of 108 grams which includes the battery. This section talks about how to operate and use the switches. I guess there's long presses and tapping. Long press for on and off and to tap it to change between modes. One thing this section states is to make sure it's between 41 Fahrenheit and 104 degrees Fahrenheit when you charge and that no dust or other foreign objects are attached to the USB plug. It also states do not subject the light to vibrations while charging so I think that's indicating that they don't want you to charge it and be riding the bicycle at the same time. It also indicates that when the battery life decreases significantly that you could replace the cartridge battery with a new one. So I'll go ahead and take a look at that too later in this video. I'm going to take a close look at the front headlight. It does indicate that the rear, as I mentioned earlier, is a safety light. This is the on-off button for the front of the headlight. And the rear of the headlight, or actually the tail light for this, is located in the rear. There's a button right here to turn on, off, and switch between the modes. It's a single long press to turn it on, and you tap it to in to switch between flashing and steady modes. Underneath here is the micro USB charging cable, as you can see. Standard micro USB should take a five volt input. And it seems pretty, the rubber seems pretty tight and, and snug, so it should keep moisture and water out. You have to push it in pretty good. 
And let's see if I could get to this cartridge light. Just turn this a few times. Right, the cartridge battery. And there is a battery here. Let me see if I can take this out. Well, I'll try to shake this battery out and it's not coming out. So I don't want to break anything. I'm just going to go leave it in there for now since I, there's a brand new light. And look inside the front of the headlight indicates that there is positive and negative connectors, DC. And here's a look at the headlight, the front of it. Now I'm going to go take a look at the helmet mount. It only came with one mount here and this is the attachment to the helmet. To adjust the angle it looks like you loosen and tighten it with a four millimeter Allen bolt. And you could it's not on that tight. I can move it around a little bit right now. This Velcro is all one type. There's not a you know, fuzzy and a sticky type so I guess you could even make it real wide if you need to and have a lot of space for your helmet attachment. The total length of the strap comes out to almost 10 inches, maybe 9 and 3 quarter inches. The plate itself is approximately 2 and a quarter inches or about 6 centimeters. I thought when I saw pictures of it online that you could attach the strap to the front and back so you could mount it around the handlebar facing forward. But unfortunately it looks like this one is glued on or sewn on together so you can't use this strap from the forward and back position. It has to go kind of sideways over a helmet for it to mount. So the connection here, the light slides in and this portion is more narrow than the mount on the light and you could just go ahead and slide it till you hear a click. And then this is the release button, so you have to squeeze this and pull it out forward. So I've got a gyro or gyro aspect helmet here and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to mount it. You strap it through here, put it down through one of the holes and then on the back side you're going to come through another hole or a vent. Make sure this part is nice and snug and on the other side go ahead and loop it through the hole, the mounting hole and center it up pretty well and you could snug it down and push the remaining strap through underneath and then pull it through and tighten it like this. Now that the helmet attachment is quite secure you could go ahead and slide on the light so we'll see how it looks like on the helmet and you know I guess I could tighten a little bit but if you're bouncing around a little bit it's a little bit loose and you can see here from this portion it's the mount not the bolt that's loose because the whole mount comes up and down. All right, so I've cinched it down quite a bit tighter. And now you can see here, if you look at this plate in the front, it doesn't, well, doesn't move as much. So from the top, it does look like it's pretty significant. It adds a little bit of height to your helmet and sticks up just a little bit. In this next section, I will show you how to charge the battery. So I have a USB type A power bank and I will be using the included cable with the CAD-I Volt 400 front light. And you're gonna have to plug it into the micro USB in the front here. Make sure that you get the orientation correct because it makes a difference. And let me go ahead and plug it in. And it looks like there is a red indication showing that it is charging. So as you can tell, this red light here indicates that it's charging. And when it's finished charging, the instructions indicate that this red light will turn off. Also, one thing to note, as I'm holding it down, the light does not turn on. So you cannot use this front light while you're charging at the same time. 
However, on the rear, I was able to turn the rear light on when the front's charging, so that's pretty good. At least one of the lights work during the charge. Again, in the instructions, it does indicate that you're not supposed to be charging and using the lights, or charging, sorry, while it's bouncing or moving about. Maybe that's because they don't want you to damage this connection there. The next section of this video, I'll be showing you the modes and some of the flashing settings on this light and comparing it to a few other daytime running lights or lights that I have. So if you are sensitive to flashing lights, feel free to look below. There will be some timestamps and go ahead and skip to the next section where I weigh it perhaps. For the operation of this headlight, long press and hold on to this button until the light turns on. For the rear light, it's the same thing, except the switch is on the back here. Again, to turn off, hold and long press it and the light will turn off. The switch is not apparently readily visible in the rear, but it's right here in the middle of the rear light. Push down and long press it and the rear light turns on. To turn off the rear of light, again in the very rear, push and hold it and that light turns off. So go ahead and long press the front to turn it on for the first light. Then to adjust it, tap once. Then you go to a dimmer beam. And this is low beam, so that was high, medium, low. Next part is a flash with a daytime strobe. And then you go to the flash mode only. And then one more press will go back to the high beam. A long press will turn it off. So let's say I go to the low beam and I long press and it turns off and it does have memory. So if I long press it again, it goes back to the dim setting. For the rear of the light, you could also have the front on or off as you like. Where my thumb is, this was the on off switch. Long press turns it on and you tap it once and that goes to the blinking setting. If you tap it again, it goes straight back to the constant, as there are only two settings. And the rear works either way with or without the front light. They work independently. However, they both use the same battery. So if you use just the rear, it could last a lot longer than if you use the front at the same time. Turning on the front, again, because they work independently, it stays the same. Nothing changes with the rear except perhaps the battery life goes down a little bit when you have both lights on. Here's a comparison of the beam pattern of other lights that I have. I have a Surfos 950F uh, Magic Shine light and the Cat Eye Volt 400 Duplex. And as you can see on the wall here, let me spread them out a little bit. They have slightly different color temperatures. And the cat eye on the far right has the most narrow pointed beam pattern. These are all on the dimmest settings. And looking at the size, it does look like it is the longer of the three lights that I have at about five and a half inches. The other light, this magic sign, is just about three inches, and the surfos is approximately four inches long. One thing I'm not sure if I'll miss yet is that these have these fast connects you could just wrap it around a handlebar, take it off the bike real quick, and then switch between rides. So if I'm riding a mountain bike one day and I go through some streets and I want to throw it on my road bike, it only takes a few seconds to take them off and put it on another bike. However, I do have multiple helmets, so I only have one cat eye mount that I have to either switch between helmets or find a helmet that I want to ride when I'm using that light. All right, time to weigh the lights. Let's see what this cat eye comes in at. Front and rear combined with the battery, complete without the mount, 111.8 grams. The mount is an additional 23.1 grams. So combined, you're adding just about 135 grams on top of your head. The other lights are kind of comparable. This one's 122 grams and my other Magic Shine is about 78 grams, which is significantly lighter actually. 
Well, here you have it. The contents of the Cat-Eye Volt 400 duplex front and rear helmet mounted light. If you did find any part of this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I plan on, make on making more videos. Thanks for watching and as always, have a most wonderful day.